Hey, I am a super fan of all things podcasts. And so I am in your target demo. And I have to ask how your business in particular is going to change once it is owned by Amazon. Well, thank you so much for having me on the show. And the business has been owned by Amazon already for uh, a little over a month. And what I, without speaking too much to what their plans are, they already announced publicly that they're going to increase staff uh, significantly over the next uh, year and, and, and over the coming years. And they're going to expand beyond uh, the slate that Wondery has produced uh, in the past. Um, obviously, Wondery is known for the best quality immersive storytelling shows, those shows that make people feel they're in the middle of the story, like uh, Business Wars or Dirty John or We Crash. And I think that Amazon will take that, um, that direction even further and will expand beyond what we've done in the past. Now, I'm curious what your response is to the success, the recent success of Clubhouse and the phenomenon of live audio conversations. We saw Spotify move into that space with an acquisition it made recently. Is this a space that's interesting to you? Does it seem competitive to podcasts? I don't believe it seems uh, very competitive with podcasts. Uh, anecdotally, I, I've been using Clubhouse for um, a couple of months now, and I've seen people who are in the podcast industry hang out in Clubhouse, but I have not heard or seen any evidence of that listening coming at the expense of uh, time spent listening to podcasts. You remember that 41% uh, of Americans, uh, 12 plus, are listening to podcasts every month, and those uh, weekly listeners are listening to eight episodes a week. So that's a lot of time, and the time that they spend listening to podcasts keeps expanding. Uh, I look at Clubhouse probably as a good promotional medium, a medium that podcasts will use okay. as another way to just get the word out. And, and secondarily, as a validation that audio is a really fascinating space. When uh, Wondery was created, a lot of companies thought of audio or as just music and talk radio. And it was in the very early days of um, 2016 and 2017 that we started to develop a podcast as a narrative, serialized storytelling medium, and so many other right. formats and continue to evolve into audio that I think we are at the early stages of even the, what the podcast community can, can create. Right. Uh, Hernan, good morning. It's Deirdre. It feels like the battle in podcasts right now is over talent, less so studios. Yet you saw Amazon by Wondery, the studio. So I wonder, how are you making sure that your top talent now that the deal has gone through, doesn't leave for other platforms like Spotify, which is offering big money for big names, or leave on their own to be paid directly by advertisers. You saw that happen with Barstool Sports, Penn Gaming, and the Call Your Daddy podcast. Uh, well, of course, I can't speak for Wonder because I'm no longer the CEO. That's a question for them. I'm, I'm just an advisor. But what I can say is talent in general looks at the size of the platform, how big their audience can be, their economics and talent relations. Uh, they're not, there's not one component of the relationship with their platform partner that is uh, always more important than the other. There's some uh, talent that prefer having a wide audience and a team that will really get their show to number one. And uh, that's uh, the reason to partner with a company like Wondery. Wondery was the only company to get 32 shows to number one on the Apple charts. And that's something that every creator wants to see uh, with their show. You know, Hernan, people always ask, you know, have we reached a peak podcast or not? And some argue it could end up being like the book business where it's so fractured, almost like a cottage industry that it's it's kind of not a huge deal to have a book, but the book publishers live for the, the mega hits, the 10 poll hits. Is that a, a good way to look at the podcast space? I don't believe so, Carl. The, the biggest difference between books and podcasts is that podcasts build habit. There's a recurring um, the, there's a recurring listening experience. People will come to a podcast and then they'll subscribe to it and come week after week. Whereas in a book, if you read a book, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to read the same book from the mm. same the next book from the same author. Um, so there's less of a built-in habit in books that there is in podcasts. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.